Hello students, this is Mr. Hatfield. I'm gonna try to demonstrate for you the basic steps involved in our lab heat of solution. We're gonna be using a calorimetry setup, which basically consists of nested foam cups. Inside this foam cup, we will measure out a particular amount of water, 20 milliliters for the sodium hydroxide, 30 milliliters for ammonium chloride. The sodium hydroxide is right here. It comes out, it comes out looking like little, uh, pieces of soap, as if you took a bar of soap and use a razor and cut off some flakes of it. It's highly reactive with the atmosphere and just a tad dangerous if it gets on your skin. So during the lab, if you ever feel an itchy or soapy sensation on your fingers, just wash your hands and reduce any risk down to zero. Remember, the solution to pollution is dilution. At any rate, you'll be getting in the lab one to two grams of this sodium hydroxide and we'll be introducing it into a calorimeter that contains 20 milliliters of water. The top of the calorimeter is another piece of a foam cup that's been cut short, and it has, as you can see, a little hole through which we can thread a thermometer. Now, before we do the reaction, we would measure the temperature of the water, the starting temperature, uh, uh, T sub I, the initial temperature. And then after we add the ingredients, and they mix, uh, we would cover the calorimeter and we would reinsert the thermometer and then we would measure any temperature change. If the temperature change goes up for that particular substance, uh, that means the temperature of the water, the surroundings is increasing. If the temperature change goes down, that means that energy is actually being sucked out of the sur surroundings, actually being sucked out of the water and going into the bonds of the substance. So if the temperature of the water increases, uh, energy is coming out of the substance. The reaction is exothermic. Uh, the number would be positive for the energy. Whereas if we see the temperature of the water getting lower, colder that is, then that means energy is being pulled out of the surroundings. And then our temperature number would be negative. But that's just for the temperature change of the water, the temperature change of the surroundings. At any rate, you'll introduce it and you'll measure the temperature change. And that's your delta T. We'll use the specific heat of water, which is 4.184, because even though we're dissolving substances in the water, it's still mostly water. And of course, we'll use the total mass, the total mass of those substances. So if like we have 20 grams of water and we put in two grams of sodium hydroxide, then the total mass of the solution would be 20 plus two, 22. Anyway, we'll do that uh, result and uh, you will get a number that's either a positive never a, a temperature change we would rinse off the thermometer we would dump out the contents of that and we would fill it up again now to accurately measure the amount of water we measure in the first place we use a graduated cylinder which is just a tube that has markings on it to tell us uh, how to uh, how to you know read it accurately as a video i'll be in closing shows it's important that the column of fluid that's inside the graduated cylinder that column of fluid will not be perfectly flat. Instead, it will be a curve. And we want to look where the bottom of the curve intersects uh, the lines on the graduated cylinder in order to measure the amount accurately. And the great news is, is that when you measure the amount, the volume of the fluid accurately, you are also accurately measuring the mass. Because when we're talking about water, liquid water between the freezing and boiling points, when we're talking about water in that state, um, well, it's essentially one gram of volume or one gram of mass for one milliliter of volume. It's roughly a one-to-one -one relationship. I mean, if you want to get picky, it's like 0 0.996 or 0 0.997, depending on what the temperature is, but basically it's one, all right? And that makes the math easy. Measure the volume of water, you automatically know the mass of the water. Now, as far as the mass of the sodium hydroxide or the ammonium chloride, well, students will get those substances from me little plastic cups. And it will be necessary for them to have determined the mass of their plastic cups beforehand by using the scales that are provided. And you simply put the plastic cup on whatever balance you have to work with at your station, press the zero button, and that automatically zeroes out the mass of, of the cup. Then you bring the cup up to the front, I give you a certain amount of the substance, you go back to your station, and whatever it says, whatever it says on the balance is just the mass 
of the substance that was added, not the cup's mass. So we get the mass of the water by inferring it from the volume of the water, which we measure with the graduated cylinder. We get the mass of the substance by, uh, that we're gonna add to it by using a balance, by controlling for that. We get the temperature change by using a thermometer, which is threaded through the top of our foam cup. And uh, that's basically all there is to it. And we'll do one trial in class for each substance, one for the sodium hydroxide and one for the ammonium chloride. And then on the whiteboard, you will be provided with example calculations with, that have similar numbers. That will be your second trial that you'll record. And then you'll end up actually doing the math on the average of the two trials. Now, I have a completely separate video that shows you how we're going to do that. So we'll, we'll go watch that video for that part. Okay, well, that's as much as I have to say on this topic. I hope that was helpful.